Hello, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is uh, part two on the subject of Calvinism. And in this uh, sh show, I want to ask the question, is Calvinism a cult? Well, some of you may have already come to that conclusion. And some of you may be thinking, well, that's pretty outlandish. How could you call Calvinism a cult? Well, let's first of all uh, try to determine what a cult is. And the, the definition it says, a religion or religious sect generally considered to be <clears throat> uh, extremist or false, uh, with its followers often living in an unconventional manner under the guidance of an authoritarian charismatic leader. Well, that's the first definition, and I can see how Calvinism has is under the guidance of an authoritarian, charismatic leader. Uh, John Calvin uh, in Geneva. Uh, if you look, go to my playlist and watch the videos uh, on that subject, you'll see that uh, there is a, a historical record of John Calvin being basically uh, having absolute uh, control over the city, the population of 15 or 20,000 people in Geneva, he had absolute authority. Uh, it was definitely authoritarian and uh, people had to get uh, approval from John Calvin on not only theological things but just every little activity of their life had to be approved by him. So he was an authoritarian charismatic leader uh, and so it fits that part. Now, the next definition is obsessive, especially faddish, uh, devotion to or veneration for a person, principle, or thing. Well, I remember Apostle Paul uh, saying that uh, don't identify yourself as from uh, Paul or don't identify yourself as, as from Cephas or from Apollos, uh, but we're Christians. Uh, people ask me, you know, what's my religion, of religious affiliation? I say, I'm a Christian. I want Christ emphasized because my faith is entirely based upon Christ. My, I'm depending completely on him for my salvation. I don't mention Paul or John or or Calvin, or Luther, or anybody else. Uh, these are just mere men. And uh, even if some of them were great men, and even apostles, we're not to identify with them. And yet, in Calvinism, uh, it's, it seems to be an obsessive devotion or veneration for a person. It's no different than someone calling them some a Lutheran. Uh, uh, or um, so I, I think it, it fits that criteria in the definition of a uh, cult. The object of such devotion, the object of such devotion, is the person and teachings of John Calvin. Uh, they've even put his writings, his essays on on uh, theology. Uh, are extra biblical writings that, that a Calvinist can, goes to and, and puts their faith in, and it's an extra biblical. It's 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 no different than a Mormon uh, putting the the Book of Mormon in place of and above the Bible, or a a, uh, uh, a Muslim demoting the Bible and putting the Quran in place of and above the Bible. So the, the Calvinists, uh, they, they get their doctrines from the teachings of men, even though they try to make the, the scriptures conform to it. So uh, the person of John Calvin, the teachings of John Calvin, is the object of this devotion. And the final definition I have here is an, an exclusive group of persons sharing an esoteric, usually artistic or intellectual interest. I, I can see all kinds of uh, words there that uh, describe all the Calvinists I've ever known. Uh, first of all, it's an exclusive group. Uh, 
they call them the the elect, the elect, the, the chosen, and, and it's already predetermined. You cannot join this group. God has decided who's in the group. It's very so exclusive. You can't even of free will join it, uh, and of or intellectual interest. Calvinists think of themselves really as very intellectual. Their their uh, uh, belief system is really more based upon philosophy, and, and that rather than is on on scriptures and theology. So I can see just from the basic definitions uh, in the in a dictionary that uh, it certainly does Calvinism certainly does uh, fit on the definitions of cults. So. Calvinism is a cult for many reasons. Cult-like behavior is always marked by an idolatrous attachment to the cult itself. All Calvinists I know, uh, they seem like they want to talk about Calvinism rather than rather than Jesus. They want to talk about Calvinism rather than uh, you know the gospel, and, and uh, they're. The, the first thing they want to do is interject Calvinism into, into every conversation. So it is really a uh, uh, cult-like behavior marked by a, an idolatrous attachment to the cult itself. So they identify themselves as Calvinists, as part of this group, and uh, Calvinists like to claim that all other theological systems are false. Calvinists had beliefs similar to the early Gnostics who believed, quote, the elect, unquote, were those chosen ones who had the secret knowledge of God. They believed that anyone who does not accept Calvinism must be a non-elect and non-regenerate person. So... Um, Uh, you know, I, I believe in Christianity. I'm a Christian. You talk to Calvinism, they're not talking about Christianity or Christ. They're talking about Calvinism and Calvin. Now, all biblical messages are run through the Calvinistic mill. Any passage which seems to run contrary to his doctrine is reworked to fit into his system. Uh, rather than conforming his beliefs to the Bible, the Calvinist tries to conform the Bible to his beliefs. Uh, I had a, a friend that came up with the term uh, twisto scripto something, you know, like people who are trying to twist the scriptures to conform and make it fit their, their predetermined belief system. Um, he used the, the description of trying to force a square peg into a round hole. And um, that's what I see Calvinists doing with the scriptures. And I think it's, it's caused, this is the root cause of it. Calvinists do not understand the book of Romans. Uh, Calvinists especially do not understand the ninth chapter of the book of Romans. Um, and that's where the problem begins. They think it's talking about individuals, individual salvation. They think it's talking about this particular people of um, um, Isaac and Esau. Um, I mean, Jacob and Esau. Um, and it's rather than thinking in terms of it's the the the. Uh, the population that comes from their loins, their their uh, progeny, their uh, the, the nations that come from them. It's it's talking about the the people that come from Jacob, the people that come from Esau, uh, and uh, that can be proven easily if if a Calvinist would use just basic Bible study uh, technique, and that is when a, a verse is quoted in Romans, you need to go back to Jeremiah and see the context. You need to go to uh, Malachi and see the context. You need to go to Genesis and see the context. Uh, I'm going, not going to attempt to approve that in this video now because I have a playlist, Calvinism Debunked, 
And I have multiple videos on that playlist that explain the proper understanding of Romans 9. So if you think that I'm incorrect on this, then watch the videos I put up on Romans chapter 9, and you'll, can, you'll see the correct way of understanding it, and, and uh, that problem should be solved. But when people understand Romans 9 incorrectly, and they think that a person doesn't have free will, God is just going to predetermine who's saved and who's not based on a whim for his, his glory, then, uh, then once they come to that conclusion, now they have to deal with all the other verses in the Bible that, that contradict that, that say, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, and that uh, all men shall be saved, that, uh, that uh, uh, the whole world will be given the, the gospel, offered salvation. So they have to redefine these words because they, uh, they are, they've come to the conclusion from Romans 9 that there's no such thing as free will and, and that uh, and salvation, Jesus didn't die for everyone and God doesn't love everyone because of Romans 9. So watch the videos I have on my playlist on Romans 9 and you'll understand the correct understanding from, from that. Uh, and that should end Calvinism right there. Be but if you remain in that uh, um, agreeing with Romans 9 and Cal Calvin's take on it, then you're going to be forced to play twisto scripto and force square pegs into round holes on all these other verses and redefine simple words like world, all, and whosoever. So, uh, rather than conforming his beliefs to the Bible, a Calvinist tries to conform the, the Bible to his beliefs. Instead of trying to understand what the Bible really says, he first asks himself how any given passage might impact Calvinism. Then, instead of honestly trying to understand the intended message of any given passage, he develops an, an interpretation that will suit Calvinism. Thus, all interpretations are custom fit to suit Calvinism. That is clearly what's going on. They don't understand Romans 9, and because of that, uh, misunderstanding, they are forced to try to make all the other verses conform to that conclusion. So, um, ordinary Christians don't have uh, a rigid five-point system that I will be discussing later. Uh, if, if a Bible passage comes up that impacts their present beliefs, uh, such Christians will change their beliefs to conform to the Bible. Now, I've admitted in the previous video that I've done that. I've changed my beliefs uh, on, on several things over the years because I, the, I've discovered that my first conclusions were wrong. I'm willing to do that. And maybe you're willing to do that. But Calvinists don't seem to be able to do that. And it's maybe because of this cult, cult mindset. So uh, the Calvinists, like the Mormon and the Jehovah Witness, serves this his rigid belief system and no biblical passage is going to change his mind. Calvinists do not try to coherently piece together the ideas in the Bible together to arrive at the big picture. Rather, they pick a passage that, that suit them best and either ignore or rework all other passages which do not endorse Calvinism. They gather together a bunch of passages and build for themselves a rigid cult-like doctrinal belief system called TULIP, uh, which is to their liking. In short, they create their own God. The God of Calvinism is not the God of the Bible. They create their own God, an idol called Calvinism. Calvinism is a very dangerous cult and falls into the same bracket of cults like Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormonism. Do not let the fact that they accept regular doctrines like the Trinity and the deity of Christ fool you either. And for that matter, don't let them, uh, don't fall for their false teaching that, that they believe in uh, you're saved by grace alone through faith alone, because they do believe that works are required, as I said in the previous video. Uh, observe their behavior in church circles, in theological debates, and especially on social networking sites, and you will see how correct these observations 
are that Calvinism is indeed a blinding and life-choking cult. In, in churches, they take control. The pastors are, are become authoritarian. They want everybody to be under the control of the pastor and under some kind of authoritarian uh, church system. And um, they put you in, in bondage and shackles. All right, so that's the end of part two. And uh, in part three, I will be discussing the origins of Calvinism. So thank you for watching. Bless you. And rest in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.